One of the worst things that can happen to you on your first actuarial exam is to run out of time. That's why you need to go into your exam with a great strategy. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my exam day strategy that I highly recommend. Plus, I'm going to be sharing a few extra tips with you too at the end. I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates so that they can get their actuarial dream job as quickly as possible. Now let's get into this video. Three, two, one, go. There's something I see happen to so many future actuaries and honestly, it happened to me as well. It's that you run out of time when you're going to take your actuarial exam. You only get three hours on exam P and FM, which are the first two actuarial exams. So it can be really difficult to answer 30 questions in just three hours. That's only six minutes per question. When you're under time pressure and you're nervous and you're doing difficult math problems, that is not much time. So it's very common to run out of time on actuarial exams and if you run out of time that usually means that you're giving away easy points because if you don't get to the last five questions then that means those are questions that you maybe could have got but you just didn't have time for it's really not a good position to be in so I highly recommend this strategy which I adapted from TIA the infinite actuary and they have a blog post on this which I will link down below if you want to read more details about it but essentially what I recommend is that you spend about five minutes at the beginning of your exam going through all the questions and breaking them down down into different categories. Now category one is going to be the questions that you know how to answer and you think that you can do it within six minutes. The second category is questions that you think you know how to answer but you don't know if you'll be able to do it within six minutes. Now the third category is all the questions that you have no idea how to answer at all. Now you're going to break it down into those three categories. So once you've done that what you're going to do is you're going to start with the questions that you have labeled in category one. Those are the questions that you know how to do and you know you can do them quickly. Once you get all those questions out of the way, you're going to start moving on to the questions that you know how to do, but you're really not 100% sure if you can get them done within six minutes. You're definitely going to try to get them done within that time frame, but you might not be able to. Hopefully, by going through the questions in category one first, you've been able to answer some of those in less than six minutes, so you have a little bit of extra time to dedicate to these questions that you have marked into category two. Okay, after that, you're going to move on to category three. Those are the most difficult questions, and honestly, since you don't know how to solve those ones, you might end up guessing on those. Hopefully, there's not very many in that category. If you go through your exam with this type of a strategy, it means that you're leaving those difficult questions that you don't know how to do, you're leaving them to the end. So it's really not a big deal or a loss of points for you if you don't get to them, because you probably didn't know how to answer them anyway. That's much better than just going into the exam and answering every question in order because if you leave five questions at the end that you know how to answer but you don't get to them that means that you're leaving points on the table and you don't want to do that leave the most difficult questions for the end just in case you don't end up having time for them okay I do have a few more tips for you but if this video has been helpful for you so far can you please give it a thumbs up to let me know and also so that it can spread to more future actuaries that need to know how to pass actuarial exams thank you thank you thank you so much okay so here's another tip for you never ever ever spend more more than one minute during your actuarial exam stuck on a problem. Now for me, this was something I really had to get over. A lot of the time when I see a problem, if I know how to do it, but I'm just feeling sort of stuck, I really just want to sit there and try to figure out how to do it. But when you're under time constraints, only three hours to get 30 questions done, you don't want to be wasting time just thinking they're doing nothing. So never spend more than one minute stuck on a problem. If you're feeling like you just don't know exactly how to continue, then move on to the next question and come back to that question later. Now, when you come back to that question, here's what's really important. Don't use the same work or even the same page that you did when you first tried to solve that problem. Use a brand new blank page and start the problem over from scratch. If you're someone that does Wordle, for example, I do Wordle every single day, then there have probably been times when you haven't been able to figure out what that word was and then you took a little break, maybe an hour, maybe came back to it later that night and you were able to solve it really quickly. That happens to me quite often. Well, the same thing applies when you're going through your actuarial exam questions. Sometimes in that minute, you just can't see how to come to the right solution. But when you come back to it with a more fresh mind, once you've stopped thinking about it for a little bit, you can get it really quickly. So make sure you're not using your old work and you're coming back to a clean page when you try this question again. This also applies if you end up getting to an answer on a question, but that answer isn't one of the multiple choice questions available. It's also a great time 
time to come back to that question later with a fresh mind, blank sheet of paper, try the question from scratch again without looking at your previous work. And a lot of the time you'll be able to get a completely different answer, but this time the right answer. And then one more quick tip for you is to do your actuarial exams in different locations when you're practicing. So hopefully you already know that it's really important to do practice exams while you're preparing for the real actuarial exam. So what I found really helpful was to do practice exams in different locations. Sometimes I would go to a coffee shop, sometimes to a library, sometimes I would do them at home, sometimes I would do them at school, sometimes I would do them in a meeting room at work. There are so many different places that you can do a practice exam, but making sure that you do exams in different locations is going to really help you get comfortable doing exams in different locations. That means that when you go to take your exam in the test center, it's going to help reduce your nerves a little bit because you're already accustomed to doing exams in different locations. A mistake I made when I was studying for my first exam was to just do my practice exams at home. And then I found that when I went to actually do the real exam, I was really nervous because I had never done an exam that was outside my comfort zone of my home. So try to take at least five practice exams in different areas in your community so that you are able to really reduce your nerves on exam day and you get comfortable taking exams out of your comfort zone. Okay, now last week I released a video about when to take your first actuarial exam and which exam to take first. So if you don't know the answers to those questions, make sure you go watch this video next and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.